Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, did not agree with their action or plan. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. First day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their heads to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the son of man must be handed over to sinners and crucified, and on the third day, rise again. Then the women remembered his words and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen clothes by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened.
Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. It's hard to believe that we're having Easter through a computer screen, but it's all unbelievable. Who would have ever guessed that now we can't even shake hands? We wear masks. We stand 10 feet from one another, no sports to speak of. If someone told me just a few months ago that this is going to be the way life is, I would have never believed them. I would have considered it an idle veil. Well, I think what the scriptures are good at is reminding us that much of life is unbelievable. It is amazing what can happen on this earth. Unbelievable. It's amazing what we can do to one another. It's unbelievable. So into this life comes a story of God's love being with us in a bodily form in the name of Jesus. And so the story says that we can take love and crucify it. Unbelievable. What some folks believe because they have to believe it is that there is a God, there is a breath, there is a spirit. There is a life that refuses to let perfect love be dead. And now there are people who believe that the evidence is overwhelming. This story is written upon their faces. People who have put to death the earthly things, those unbelievable things that we do to one another and have set their minds instead on the things that are from above. The evidence of the resurrection is everywhere. Go look for it. It is unbelievable. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us pray. Imaginative and gracious God, right now we are much like the women of that early Easter morning, doing what we can, where we can, to deal with the grief, fear, and isolation of what is in the unknown. Please, God, let us catch our breath with surprise. May our eyes fill with tears at the joy of your vision for our world. Your ways are not our ways. Help us see with a fresh heart, with fresh eyes, newly opened and vulnerable, your kingdom, your way to be in the world. Let love, abundance, and joy be our guide even in these days. In our risen Christ's name we pray. Amen.